Welcome to Electron Online. In our quest to understand photons better, we're going to talk about what we call me scattering. Now, in a previous video, we already looked at Rayleigh scattering, but now we're going to look at what we call me scattering. So what's the difference? Well, there's three different regions of the ratio of particle size to photon size where we have different kinds of scattering. So the first type of scattering is what we call Rayleigh scattering. And I don't, yeah, I have it right here. So Rayleigh scattering. And that occurs when the particle is less than one ten the size of the photon, or at least the wavelength of the photon, because size of photon is still something we need to tackle. It is a difficult concept. And it's really not the, trans we really don't think about the size of photon in the traditional way where we can actually put a limit to how big a photon is. But we're getting there. We're trying to understand what a photon is. And so we're going to look at it in terms of how photons are scattered in the atmosphere when they encounter particles in the atmosphere. So when the particles are really small, less than a tenth of the wavelength of a photon, namely the air molecules in the atmosphere, then we experience what we call Rayleigh scattering. And it turns out that the amount of backscatter or the amount of extinction, and so when we talk about how much of the light gets, gets scattered away or gets extinct or extinguished or absorbed in any way possible, so meaning how much of the light that is incident on the particles gets scattered back and gets extinguished, and how much of the light continues on forward, well, we call that the extinction coefficient. And that is typically a function of the ratio of the radius of the particle to the size of the photon. And so when it comes to Rayleigh scattering, when the particle is, let's say, less than 50 nanometers, because the wavelength of visible light is somewhere between 400 and 700 nanometers, so we take a tenth of that, or less than a tenth of that, we're talking about very small particles like air molecules. And so when the light is incident on that, with other words, photons of visible light, then a significant amount is scattered. And the amount of the scattering, the coefficient, or what I call the extinction coefficient, how much the light is scattered, is simply proportional to the radius of the particle divided by, ooh, that should be frequency, that should be wavelength. All right, there we go. So if the particles get bigger, the amount of light that gets scattered is bigger as well. So definitely a function of the size of the particle relative to the wavelength. But then as the particle gets bigger, and the particle now reaches a size somewhere between one tenth to a full wavelength in size, so let's say the diameter of the particle is roughly the size of a wavelength, then we go into what we call me scattering. So what is different about me scattering? Well, what it turns out is that the amount of scattering from the particle depends upon the direction. So let's say that the photons are incident in this direction, so that's the direction of the photons, and the photons are incident on the particle, which is now bigger than these very tiny particles where we have Rayleigh scattering, then more of the intensity of the scattering goes forward in a single dimension. For example, if the wavelengths, if the, the photons come in this direction, then most of the scattering will be in the forward direction and very little scattering will be in the backward direction. Not only that, the amount of the reflection or the scattering in the backward direction depends upon the ratio of the radius of the particle divided by the frequency, but not just in the linear relationship, in a kind of trigonometric relationship, like a cosine or sine function. It actually varies with that ratio, and then we can see that that variation kind of diminishes as the ratio of r over a gets bigger. So therefore, we have an e to the minus k r, r over f term. I'll put that in quotation marks because that's something that I kind of came up with to kind of give a feel for that. So the amount of scattering will depend upon some sinusoidal function that seems to diminish as the R over F gets bigger. And so we kind of have these type of components related to the amount of scattering experience, the me scattering. But you can see that there's some scattering in the up, backwards, and down direction, and the predominant scattering in me scattering is in the forward direction. As the particle gets bigger, you can see here the particle is bigger again. As the particle gets to be about the size of a wavelength or bigger than the wavelength, then more of the direction of the scattering is forward in the same direction as the approaching photon. And you can see that very little of the scattering goes backwards. At some point, the coefficient of the extinction coefficient becomes a constant. So it's regardless of the size of the particle relative to the wavelength, the scattering then becomes uniform in the direction proportional to the intensity of the light. And so therefore, we then have what we call more of what we call optical scattering rather than me scattering. So the me scattering then becomes, becomes the type of what we call optical scattering. The light simply scatters off a large particle.
So mean scattering is kind of the scattering that we find in the in-between stage between Rayleigh scattering and optical scattering. We have what we call mean scattering and the scattering is kind of very interesting way in which is done. So you can see then that the amount of light that gets scattered forward and backwards depend upon the ratio of the size of the particle to the frequency and, and you can see that this is roughly from uh, one tenth uh, the ratio of R over F, oh, I keep saying F, but I want to say lambda. So we go from about one tenth the ratio of the radius of the particle to the wavelength of the particle to about one times the ratio of the radius to the wavelength. So in this region, when the particle is roughly one tenth the size of the wavelength to about the same size of the wavelength, in that region the scattering will vary kind of like sinusoidally and the difference here in the beginning especially is basically a 10 to 1 ratio so it's a, a quite a dramatic change in the scattering as that ratio changes from 1 tenth of r over lambda to 1 times r over lambda and then of course it also diminishes like this and so that's why I kind of threw this in there so we have a, a a declining exponential function so as r over f gets bigger then the variation in the scattering gets smaller that's kind of an interesting relationship. So that's what we mean by me scattering. Notice it's in all directions, but the forward direction in the same direction as the approaching photons is where the predominant light will continue to scatter and a little bit will then get backscatter. And of course, the amount of backscatter does depend upon that ratio. Now, where do we see that in nature? Well, when you look at the sun, especially in the sun when it's kind of a hazy day where there's a lot of moisture in the air or a lot of small dust particles in the air then you look in the sun direction and you can see around it kind of a halo of white light that halo of white light is really a result of the me scattering that then hits those particles of that particular size if the air is very clean then you don't see that me scattering then of course we just see typically just the Rayleigh scattering if the air is pretty well free of the moisture the kind of like the fog particles or kind of like um, dust particles in the air Another thing is, for example, when you turn on the, uh, the beam of your car, the headlines of your car, in a foggy condition, then again you see what we call the me scattering, where we have this back scattering, and that's why you don't recommend to put on your high beams in foggy days, because you get a much of that light reflected back in your eyes and they can't see anything. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of what me scattering is, and again, it relates the properties of photons to what happens in the atmosphere when it encounters different sized particles and the different kind of scattering that the light then experiences. Also, of course, when we have this kind of a, a variation, depending upon the size of the radius of the particle versus the wavelength of the photons coming in, then we have what we call kind of a diffraction result because then we have some sort of interference of the scattered light, which then causes these variations in the intensity of the backscatter. And we'll get into that a little bit more as we continue looking at these videos to try and understand what photons are.